So today's paper is the 2019 exam from Manchester Grammar School, the arithmetic paper. And as before, it starts off with some easy questions. Perhaps you can just try those first three kids and then send them to me. So hopefully I, I would do the first one on paper and then submit the answer to me on chat. Don't do it in your head because it's not really worth the risk. Just do it properly and get the mark. I'll do it on the board as well. Four, six, three, seven. And microphones off, please. Okay, 18 25ths as a decimal. This might be a little tricky for some. If you're having difficulty, then convert it into a fraction with 100 as the denominator. 25 goes into 100 four times. So you do 18 times four, which is 72. Now, remember, we have to write that as a decimal. We haven't finished our answer. And 72 hundredths, when written as a decimal, is 0.72. I'm just going to check in some of your answers. OK, good. We'll find for that. And then number three should be quite easy. But remember, the quickest way to work it out is going to be to do 5, 4, 7 times 3 and then add your three zeros to the end of that answer. I'll put the correct answer on the board in a second once you've had time to work it out. Yep, thank you, okay. That's correct. Um, and in a second, those of you that have got the answer, why don't you tell me what number that is? Can you say the number once you've calculated it? So remember to do 547 times three and then add three zeros to the end. Yeah, good. Doing the right answers here. I'll, type, I'll write it in. Okay. Um, okay, do you want to unmute and can you tell me what the answer, how to read the answer as you've got it already? For which question? For number three, what number is that? It is... 1,641,000. Good, well done. Okay, um, I think some of you may have left off a digit there, but the correct answer is on the board. Then work out 3.19 minus 1.72. This is fairly straightforward because we've got the same number of digits in each, but remember when you subtract decimals or add decimals, you need to line up the decimal points. So you can see here, my decimal points are lined up and then you can subtract from there. And the correct answer to that one is 1.47. Like last time, I'll go through the first few questions quite quickly, because um, they're quite easy, and then we can spend longer on the ones at the end. Okay, so add the product of five and 13 to the sum of five and 13. Product, remember, means multiply. So you need to multiply five and 13, and that's 65. And then you add that to the sum of 5 and 13. The sum of 5 and 13, you just add them, is 18. So for this question, you need to do 65 plus 18. And that is 83. Hey, missing number sequence. With any missing number sequence, I need you to write down what the difference is between each number. Don't, don't just do it in your head, write it down. So on here, yep. Okay, so 101 to 86, that is minus 15. 86 to 74, minus 12. You can skip ahead on this if you want to do it on paper at home, so minus nine. Okay, then if we're doing minus 15, minus nine, minus 12, minus nine, these numbers are going down three each time. So my next step should be minus six to get to this one, and then it should be minus three for the last one. So we'll do 65 minus six, and that's 59. And then just double check that that works with the last number as well. So it should be minus three, 59 minus three is 56. So then we're sure that this is the right answer. 
So remember all number sequence questions, you need to write in what the, what the difference is. Even if you're stuck and you're not sure how to do it, write the difference and then sometimes the answer will come to you once you see it on paper. 59 is our answer for number six. Okay, working out fractions. So, first of all, to divide a by a fraction, we need to write both these numbers as improper fractions or top heavy fractions. So can you tell me what three and three quarters is as an improper fraction? And then tell me what two and a half is as an improper fraction. Uh, is three and three quarters as an improper fraction 15 over four? Yeah, that's fine. Can someone else give me two and a half as an improper fraction? Five. Five over what? Four? Two. Two, yes, the denominator stays the same. So five over two, thank you. Okay, when we divide by a fraction, the, we actually flip the second fraction over and then multiply. So I'll show you what I mean. You get five, 15 over four, that's fine. Then flip the second fraction so it becomes two fifths and multiply the two of them together. Now that we've done that, we can just multiply. So we would multiply the numerator, multiply the denominator. However, if you are already comfortable with multiplying and dividing fractions, I'm going to show you how to make it a little simpler. If this is new to you, maybe close your ears because it might confuse you a little bit. So I am going to simplify these fractions. However, when I'm multiplying fractions, I don't just have to simplify vertically, I can simplify diagonally. As long as I've got a numerator and a den denominator included. So if I simplify diagonally, 15 and five both divide by five. So that's three and that's one. And then two and four both divide by two. So that's one and that's two. Now I'm going to multiply those new numbers together and I'll get the same answer that I would have if I hadn't simplified yet, but now my answer is automatically going to be in its simplest form. So I do three times one, which is three. I do two times one, which is two. And my answer is three over two. So remember the question said in its simplest form, I will just double check. This can't be simplified any further, which it can't. So you can either write three over two as your answer, or as the, the question was using, mixed numbers to begin with, I would write my answer as a mixed number. So what is three over two as a mixed number? Three over two as a mixed number. Can someone tell me? One and one half. And a half. Yes, good. Okay, so we have one, one, and, one and a half. Okay, remember when someone's already given us the answer, please don't give it to us again. All right. What is 30%? of 550. It's centimetres cubed, but the centimetres cubed part doesn't really matter. It's just a normal percentages question. So I will start with 100% equals 550. And then I'll get 10% because 10% goes into 30. So 10% from 100%, that's dividing by 10, dividing by 10, 550 divided by 10 is 55. And then to get to 30%, now unfortunately this is all written in one column, but to get from 10 to 30, we would times by three. So I'm going to do 55 times by three. 55 times by three, I'll work out over to this side for you. 165. So our answer is 165 centimeters cubed, which hopefully you've been able to calculate on your own. You've got to work faster if you don't want me to give away the answer. Okay. Express 42 minutes as a fraction of one hour. One hour, hopefully you know, has 60 minutes. So we just put 42 over 60. 
And then you need to simplify that because it wants the answer in its simplest form. So I'll give you a second just to simplify. Make sure you simplify all the way. Just dividing by two isn't going to do it here. Yeah, good. Okay, seven over ten. Yep. Yeah. Um, just send the message to me in chat. I'll let you know when you can use your microphone. But yeah, it's seven over ten. Okay. So we're dividing both the numerator and denominator by six. So our answer is seven over ten. This next one should be fairly straightforward. We've got four million eight hundred. And the only thing that hasn't been added is the 60,000. So if you can partition numbers, then you're fine there. Um, don't write the answer to the previous one as out of because it's asked for a fraction. So you should be using the, um, the slash button there and writing it on paper with, um, with a dividing line. Okay, John thinks of a number. He multiplies that number by four and then adds three to the result. If the answer he obtains is 35, what is the number he first thought of? Now, by now you probably know, I would like to draw a number machine for this. So why don't you draw along at home as well? So he multiplies that number by four. So thinks of a number, he multiplies by four and then adds three to the result. You can make this can be very messy when you're doing this in an exam and you don't even really have to put the boxes in just something that puts you're working on paper so it adds through to the result and he gets 35 now we're going to go backwards here and do the opposite of everything so 35 take away 3 it's 32 and then i would jot down the answer there just so i don't lose track and then 32 divided by 4 because we're still doing the opposite so our first number should be eight, which plenty of you have got. Well done. Okay, so eight. Okay, in a triangle, the largest angle is two times the middle angle, and the middle angle is three times the smallest angle. What is the size of the largest angle? Um, can someone send to me in chat what method we're going to use to figure out this, please? Yep, thank you, Manon. We're going to use ratio. Okay, so I am going to label the ratio columns as, um, what did they call them in the question? Large, middle, and small. Large, middle, small. And I'll start with the smallest angle and I'll put a one in that column and work out all the other ratios from there. So smallest angle is one. Okay, the middle angle is three times the smallest angle. So that would make that three. And then the largest angle is two times the middle angle. So we do this times two and we get six. Now from there, why don't you try and complete this? You can, you, so this is your starting point. Why don't you try and complete the question? Okay, good, got our first answer. Well done, Olivia. Make sure when you answer this question, by the way, you might want to reread the question just to make sure you're giving the right angle. You don't want to accidentally give the smallest when they ask for the middle or something like that. Okay, I'm gonna keep going with the working on the board just in case anyone's stuck. So six plus three plus one gives us 10, but there are 180 degrees in a triangle. So if we know the angles in a triangle add up to 180, then all of these angles should add up to 180. So I'm going to put equals 180 underneath. Then we need to figure out how to get from 10 to 180. We times by 18, which should mean that if we times everything else by 18, then we'll get our final answer. 
So 1 times 18 is just 18. 3 times 18, I've got on here, is 54. But definitely work that out in your head when, no, sorry, on paper is what I mean, when you're doing it yourself. So 54. And then 18 times 6 would be 108. Now the question asks the size of the largest angle. So I go to my largest column and it's 108. So for that, you need to remember that the angles in a triangle add up to 180. Okay, probability, which people find tricky, although with a bit of practice, it should be okay. Um, now, Alison has six yellow discs, five blue discs, and nine red discs, which she places in a bag. When she draws one disc out, what is the probability that the disc is not red? Now, um, I wouldn't recommend you do what I'm about to do in an exam, but just for the purposes of understanding this better. So we've got six yellow, five blue, and nine red. Now, usually to find the probability that something was red, we take the number of red discs over the total number of discs that we have. However, in this case, we want not red. So we add up the probabilities of everything else. So if it's not red, it will either be yellow or blue. Now the chance of it being yellow or blue is going to be 11, because these add up to 11, out of the total number of discs. Now, I've already added these up. There are 20 discs altogether. So the probability of it not being red is 11 over 20. Can someone give me the probability of the disc being blue? So the disc is blue. What's that probability? 0 0.25. Um, yes, so we were working in fractions before, so I'd prefer to keep it in fractions, but yes, you're right. So either 0 0.25 or you would start off with 5 twentieths and then simplify to 1 quarter in that case. And if you know the probability of the disc being blue is one quarter, what is the probability of it not being blue? Can someone send it to me? Probability that the disc is not blue. This is tricky. Yep, good, Isabel. It's three quarters, yes, or 75%. Well done, Ila and Andina as well. Um, so probabilities always add up to one. And so one quarter and three quarters add up to one. So that's how we'd figure out the probability of it not being blue. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that, go back to the original question. So the original question was, what is the probability that the disc is not red? And that was 11 twentieths. So I just gave you a couple of extra questions just as revision. Okay, number 14, We're starting to get into trickier questions now. Okay. Now, before I get into this question, actually, I just want to explain what profit is in case some of you are unfamiliar with that word. So profit is how much money you make after you've paid the costs of something. So when you sell something, you usually have to buy it from somewhere first. That's how all the shops that you go to work. They buy the products so in the clothing shop, they'll buy it from somewhere and then they'll sell it to you for more money. And profit is the difference between how much they've paid for it and how much they get when they sell it. So for example, if you bought a t-shirt for 10 pounds and then you sold it to someone for 15 pounds, then the profit is five pounds. So you sold it for 15, you bought it for 10, and then you make um, five pounds of extra money. That's how, um, how much money you've made on top of what you had to pay out. Um, so in this question, they are concerned about profit partially. So a shopkeeper buys a box of 60 apples for 12 pounds. If he finds that one tenth of the apples are bad and can't be sold, at what price must he sell each of the good apples so he can make a profit of 15 pounds? There are quite a few steps to this question. So let's go back to the beginning, break it down. 
So he buys a box of 60 apples for 12 pounds, but he finds that one tenth of the apples are bad and can't be sold. So first of all, let's figure out how many apples are good and can be sold. So it's one tenth off 60. Yep, so six are bad, and that means you've got 54 good. Now don't forget to take off that tenth, because that's what children do sometimes. They find a tenth, and then they just go with that answer. They forget that you have to take it off. So 54 good apples is what he has now. And he paid 12 pounds for those apples. We'll ignore the bad ones. We'll just pretend those don't exist now because they've had to be thrown away. So at what price must he sell each of the good apples so that he makes a total profit of 15 pounds? So remember, profit is the difference between how much you've sold them for and how much you paid for them. So how much money would he have to bring in if he paid 12 pounds and wants a profit of 15 pounds? How much money would he need in his little cash box at the end of the day? He needs, so profit is the difference between what you sold it for and what you bought it for. So don't try and skip to the end of the question because some of you are giving me wrong answers right now. Just concentrate on this part for me. So it's complicated. So any, does anyone know how much money he would have to have got from his customers that day? Yes, Olivia, well done. It is 27. So he spends 12 pounds. If he receives 27 pounds, then that gives him a profit of 15 pounds. So he needs to sell, once he's sold the 54 good apples, he needs to have received 27 pounds in order to make the profit that he wants to make. So he, sell, he makes 27 pounds that day and he sold 54 apples. So the question wanted to know, at what price must he sell each of the good apples so that he makes that profit. We need to figure out how much each apple costs if he gets 27 pounds at the end of the day. So to figure that out, we're going to do 27 divided by 54. There's a reason I've written it out as a fraction that way, because it's going to be easier than trying to do um, short or long division. So 27 to 54, has anyone managed to simplify that? Not quite, Olivia. Um, you've made a mistake that I knew someone would make, um, at least one person. I'll come back to that in a second. So if you've got two pounds, that's not the right answer. Note that 27 is half of 54. So what does that fraction simplify to? 27 over 54 simplifies to half, good, Galila. So he makes half of a pound, that means, which yes, okay, okay, means if he makes half of a pound, that is equivalent to 50p. He makes 50p. Um, the difficulty with this question is knowing whether to do 54 divided by 27 or 27 divided by 54. What I would recommend doing is putting simple numbers in. Um, you can do this with a lot of different questions when you're not sure which order to do things in. So let's say he makes a hundred pounds and he has 10 t-shirts. And we need to figure out how much he sells each one for. So we would do, 100 divided by 10. So in this case, we knew that instead of 100, he made 27 pounds, and we knew he had 54 apples. So you're going to do things in the same order. Instead of 100, you're going to do 27, and instead of 10, you're going to do 54. So that's how we can check which way round we should have the numbers. So I like to do that with a few different kinds of maths questions. I put in simple numbers where I know the answer. I know that 
each t-shirt here would have to sell for 10 pounds. I think about what the operation would be, and then I put my hard numbers into that same operation. Um, try it out with some questions at home if you're dealing with tricky numbers and just get used to doing that. And um, yeah, once you've got a bit of practice, then it's quite a handy way of figuring out questions. Okay, let's move on to number 15. I'm gonna just rub this out, get that out of the way. Okay, number 15, surface area of a cube. Now surface area is the area of all of the sides of a shape. Um, so the top, bottom, all of the sides, what is the area of each of those? And then you add them up. So this cube, we know that from here to here is 15 centimeters. And as each face is a square, they're all equal in length. So what is the length of one side of this cube? Should be nice and easy. Yes, I know that's five. So one side is five centimeters. Now from that, can you figure out the area of one square? What's the area of one square? That's 25 centimeters squared. So area of one, so I've got area of square equals 25 centimeters squared. Now, as you can see here, a cube has six faces. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we need to just do 25 times six. 25 times six, oh, got lots of you. So the answers, um, yes, Andina, that's 150. Um, Manon, be careful there. You would have lost that mark because you are close, but not quite right. So make sure you're working things out properly. So 150, and Carla, work them out on paper carefully before you give an answer, because it would be such a shame to do the work for that question and then fall at the final hurdle. Okay, next question. Now this is kind of an algebra question, although there is a way to do it, even if you haven't um, done algebra before. You have to just think, about what you would see in front of you, you say. Okay, so two bottles of water and three small bags of fruit cost a total of two pounds 55. If a bottle of water costs 15p more than a bag of fruit, what is the cost of a bag of fruit? Okay, I'm going to write a little equation to represent the first bit of information. So two bottles of water and three small bags of fruit cost two pounds 55. If a bottle of water costs 15p more than a bag of fruit, what is the cost of a bag of fruit? Okay, so we've got three F. Now two bottles of water, if one bottle of water costs 15p more than a bag of fruit, then that's like water equals fruit plus 15p. So two bottles of water must cost how much more than two packets of fruit? Two bottles of water cost how much more than two packets of fruit? One bottle costs 15p more. So two bottles cost 30p more. Yes, good, Isabel. Okay, so instead of having two bottles of water here, I am going to have two packets of fruit plus 30p, because they cost 30p more than a packet of fruit, plus three packets of fruit, because I already had that here, equals two pounds 55. So instead of having two bottles of water, I've replaced that with this part, two packets of fruit plus 30p. Okay, just want to rub out my bottom part, it's out of the way, okay. Now let's simplify this a little bit. So we've actually got five packets of fruit on this side, plus 30 equals 255. Now do you want to try and figure out from that the price of a, a bag of fruit? If you're not sure how to do it, just send me a note so I know where um, to explain it in full.
Um, okay, I think we need to, oh, you've, hang on. No, okay, have another look at that. I was wondering if you had the pack, price of five packets of fruit, but I'm not sure that's it. So you're going to use this equation to figure out how much a packet of fruit costs. That's okay, Annabelle. We will talk about it. Um, okay, getting a couple of right answers and a couple of wrong answers and a couple of not sure. So let's talk about it. Okay, so 5F plus 30 is £2.55. Now 5F must equal, therefore, £2.25. So I took the 30p, sorry, I should really have um, my signs in here because I'm mixing units of measurement. So five packets of fruit plus, plus 30p would equal £2.55. So five packets of fruit must equal £2.25. Okay, so if you imagined those items in front of you, it might make a bit more sense. So five packets of fruit plus 30p, 30p in coins equals two pounds 55. So I just took 30p away from each side so that they were still even. So five packets of fruit equals two pounds 25. Now, can you all do some um, short division and figure out the price of a packet of fruit? If you know five cost two pounds 25, um, Isabel, have another look at that, please. I think you may have forgotten to carry somewhere or something like that. Okay, yep. Yeah. So I have to get some corrections in now. Yep, yeah, good. And if you've figured out the cost of a bag of fruit, why don't you tell me the cost of a bottle of water as well? Um, and Dina, have another look at your division there. Yep, yeah. okay. Good. I'm just going to do it on the board. So 225 divided by 5. 5 into 2 goes 0 times. Put the decimal point directly above and carry the 2. 5s into 22 go 4, carry the 2. 5s into 25 go 5 times. So our answer there for one bag of fruit is 45 pence. Note that they've already put a P in here on the answer sheet. So instead of writing it like this, you need to write 45. Do not write 0.45 for that answer because you will lose the mark because that's saying that it's less than a penny if you write 0.45. Okay, good. So our answer there should be 45p for the bag of fruit and then the bottle of water costs 15p more than a bag of fruit. So if you're working out the cost of a bottle of water, that would be 60p. And then if you had plenty of time at the end of this exam by some chance, then you could put in, you could add up your price for the bottles of water, your price for the three bags of small fruit and make sure that you get £2.55 there. Poppy, you're right, that is a hard question. Um, I would say you'd, you'd need some practice of similar questions, which we can do in class um, before you've mastered this. I, I don't think doing one of these questions is going to mean that you can do it in future again, because it's tricky. Okay. okay. Bilal has made a box in the shape of a cuboid with sides four centimeters, five centimeters and 32 centimeters. He wants to make another different shaped box, but with the same volume. Now, hopefully you've remembered that in order to find volume, we multiply the three sides of a cuboid. So we would multiply the height, the width and the depth, depth or length, width and depth. Okay, so really we're just multiplying these three measurements to find the volume. Let's finish reading the question first, actually, because we don't want to do any work that we don't need to do. Okay. He wants to make a different, another different shaped box, but with the same volume. This box will have a height of 10 centimeters and a square base. What will be the length of the base? Okay, so we do need to find out the volume of the first shape. 
first of all. So I would do five times four, because that's easy. You get 20 times 32. Now I can do that in my head. If I do 32 times two, 64, and then add the zero. So the area of, sorry, the volume of the first cuboid is 640 centimeters cubed. Okay, make sure you're all watching the board. Okay, so this box will have a height of 10 centimeters and a square base. What will be the length of the base? What do they mean of? Okay, so if we know it has a height of 10, then we can divide by 10 to start finding the other sides. So divided by 10 is 64. So that means when you times the two other sides together, you get 64. If this is a square base and you multiply the sides together, then the two sides must be the same. So we need to know what number times itself gives us 64. You need to tell me. Okay, so a couple of people are confused about this question. So let's go back to the beginning and just go through it again so you know where all these measurements are coming from. So we had a box that's a cuboid with sides of four, five, and 32. Now to find the volume of a cuboid, we would times the different measurements together. So I'm just gonna draw a cuboid on the board so you can see. So let's say this was four, this is not to scale, this was five, and this is 32. So you would times all three measurements together to get the volume. I did that, so I times five by four, which was 20, and then 20 times 32, and I got 640 centimeters cubed. Now to find the volume, so Bilal wants to make another different shaped box, but with the same volume. So we know that the new box has to have a volume of 640 centimeters cubed. This box will have a height of 10 centimeters and a square base. So our new box, where we have a square base, it's a bit like that, okay? So the height we've been told is 10 centimeters. And remember to find the volume, we would do the height times the width times the length. So if I divide my volume by 10, then I get 64, and that must be what I got when I times the width by the length in this new shape. It also says that this new shape has a square base, which is why I drew the square over here. I'm just gonna move that down. Can I move that down? just to make sure everyone can see that. Okay, so if this is the base of the new shape, we've found out that it should have an area of 64, because when we multiply this side by this side, we got 64. And if that's a square base, then these two sides must be the same, because it's a square. So then we come to ask what number times itself would give us 64? So a few of you have already given me the answer for that, so you can correct. So the answer would be eight. Now let's just redo that, um, or go backwards, so you can see how that works. So we learned that the first shape was like this one at the bottom, and the volume was 640 centimeters cubed. Then we thought the answer to the um, lengths of the other shape was eight. So if I have a different cuboid, to find the, air, find the volume, I would do this side times this side times this side. So I'd go width, length, and then depth or height up that way. So if this if the sides were eight and eight, that would give us a square base, which is 64. And then 64 times 10 gives us 640. So then we know that the two shapes do actually have the same volume. 
that means that our answer will be correct. Right, let's look at the next question. And rub that out. Okay, a large number of buses stop at the bus stop at the end of Old Hall Lane. The 42 bus stops there every six minutes, the 43 bus stops there every eight minutes, and the 45 bus stops every 15 minutes. If all the buses stop at Old, Hain, Old Hall Lane stop at 4 p.m., write down the total number of buses that will call at the stop between 4.20 and 4.50. So they all started at four o'clock and we want to know how many come between 4.20 and 4.50. So let's write down which buses will come when. So the 42 bus stops every six minutes starting at four o'clock. So if we skip to a multiple of six that is greater than 20 minutes, because we don't need the six minute one, the 12 minute one, the 18 minute one. So we skip to 24 because that's the first multiple of six that's greater than 20 minutes. Later. So the 42 bus will come at 424. So I'll just write 24. And then if it comes every six minutes, it will come again at 30. And then again at what times before 450? So 24, 30, and then what times? Um, I'm not sure about that answer. I think there's a typo in there and then numbers aren't quite right. So yes Emily, good. Um, and yes Emily you just missed off one which we've got from Olivia. So it will then come again at 36, at 42 and at 48. Okay now we need to do the same thing for the number 43. Why don't you take a second to try and work out when that comes. So the 43 bus stops there every eight minutes. So when does, will it come between 4.20 and 4.50? And we want multiples of eight. Um, Undina, you've missed the first one but the others are fine. Yes, Emily, good. Yeah, that's right now, Dina. Just give you another couple of seconds to think about it for everyone else. Annabelle, that first one, oh, those aren't all multiples of eight, actually. Okay, so let's have a think. Um, so it comes every eight minutes, and remember it started at four o'clock, so it would come at eight past, 16 past and so on. But we don't care about those first ones because they're before 420. So the first multiple of eight that's after 20 is 24. 24. And then it will come again at 32, at 40 and 48. And we won't go any further because that would be after 450. Okay. So you should have down the 43 bus will come at 24, 32, 40 and 48 past. Now we just need to do the same thing for the number 45. Number 45 comes when? Comes every 15 minutes. When does it come between 4.20 and 4.50? Can you give me the times that it would come? Yep, good, thank you Emily and Tamer. So it would come at 4.30 and 4.45. Now all we need to do is add up how many numbers we've written down here. So the reason that we've written it all down nicely is that now this is a really easy process to write our final answer and it's good to have this all here so that if later when you're checking your answers, you can check that you got everything down and that you didn't make any silly mistakes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So the buses will come 11 times between 4.20 and 4.50 p.m. Okay, um, now number 19, I'm going to do on a different slide because um, I need some room. Okay. In a school table tennis league, each team plays one of the other teams twice during a year, once at home and once away. If there are 30 matches in total during the season, how many teams are there in the table tennis league? Okay. First thing I'm going to do is halve 30 because they play each team twice. So there are 15 matches against each in total between a new team and then the other 15 are just repeat matches which won't help us to figure out how many teams there are. Um, now this is a complicated problem so listen carefully. What I'm going to start doing is um, I'll start with let's say three teams and write it down. So if we have team one they would play team two and team three. And then team two would still need to play team three so that everyone's played each other. However, that only gives us three matches and we're aiming for 15. Oh, and I'll write, sorry, team three, except team three has played everyone. They've played team two and they've played team one. So they're covered. So that gives us three matches and we want 15. So what if I add another team? to this. So I would copy this down on paper while I'm doing it, by the way. If I had another team, team four, team one would play team four as well. Team two would need to play team four. Team three would need a match with team four. And then we'd have team four. Um, so just in case anyone's confused about this working. So this means team one plays team two, team one plays team three, team one plays team four. Then team two plays team three, team two plays team four, and team three plays team four. And then everyone's played each other so far. So still hold off on the answers because I'm still not actually getting a right answer yet. So just work through this with me. Okay. Now let's try five teams. So team one plays five teams, the, the fifth team, sorry. Team two plays the fifth team. Team three plays the fifth team, and then team four plays the fifth team. How many matches have they have we got here then? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not enough, but maybe if we add one more team, we will have enough. So let's add a sixth team. Team one plays team six, 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 and team five plays team six. Let's count, we have one, two, three, four, five, plus another four is nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now we've got the 15 matches that we needed, which means there must be six teams in the league in total. That gives us 15 matches when they play each other once and 30 matches when they play each other twice. Okay, Chen writes down a two digit number. He finds that if he swaps the digits of the number round, the new number he creates is three more than one third of the original number. What was the original number? Now, if you're anything like me, you found that all those thirds and digits quite overwhelming. So I would reread the question, maybe twice even, just to be really clear on what they're saying. So Chen writes down a two digit number. He finds that if he swaps the digits of the number round, the new number is three more than one third of the original number. Now, if we have, so a two digit number, so that's just a way of saying it's a number between 10 and 99. Um, if we have a number where we are able to calculate one third of it, because it says that he calculates one third of the original number, then that number must be a multiple of three. That doesn't narrow it down that much, but at least we've learned something. 
And remember, this might come in handy. Remember that in multiples of three, when you add the digits, you get a number that is a multiple of three. So if I just gave you a random multiple of three, um, 102, if I add one, zero, and two, I get three. Three is a multiple of three, so 102 must divide by three. You might need to use that later on. So I'm going to try out some numbers and I'm going to write some columns to help me to order my thoughts. So if the number we end up with, I'm going to put last number, goes there, and then three less than that goes there. Now let me just reread this to make sure I'm doing the right thing. So he finds that if he swaps the digits of the number round, the new number is three more than one third of the original number. Um, so swaps the digits around and he gets this answer. So original number should be a reverse of the number in the first column. So if I did, let's say 15, that should be three more than the one third of the original number. So that should be, so 12 should be one third of the original number. Okay, I'll put this in here, one third of the original number. I haven't worked it out, but I know that 12 is too small to be one third of 51, so that's not going to work. I remember before we'd said, if we're finding a third of a number, then the numbers must be multiples of three. Um, and this number also has to be a multiple of three, because when you swap around the digits in a multiple of three, you still have a multiple of three. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, so I'd said for 102, if we add up those digits, we get three, which means that number divides by three. So that means 102 divides by three because three divides by three. But if I swap those digits round, I get two, zero, one. Those digits still add up to three. So two, zero, one must divide by three. So I'm just focusing on multiples of three in these rows. So 12 was too small. I'll skip a few and go to 21. So 21 is three more than 18, which would need to be one third of these digits switched around, which is 12, so that doesn't work. 18 is not one third of 12. Let's try 24. Three less is 21, and I swap around these numbers, and I get 42. Doesn't work. 21 is not one third of 42. Now let's try 27. Three less is 24. Swap those round, I would get 72. Now that is looking more hopeful because 20 times three is 60. So that may well be one third of 72. So I'm going to check that with some short division. Carry the one, threes into 12, go four times. So that works. If we take 20, 72 as the original number, we swap the digits round, we get 27, and 27 is three more than one third of 72. Now, I know your brain might be exploding a little bit. Mine is a little bit as well. Um, so with these questions, unfortunately, there's no great way to do it apart from trial and error. Um, so as we did with previous ones last week, the best thing to do is kind of rule out some of the numbers and then work, go through the ones that are possible options. Um, but sometimes you have to skip a few or something if you think it's not going to work. So like I skipped to the ones in the 20s. Okay, let's see what you have to say about this. Okay, yes, you're saying it works. It does work. So that was really hard. Um, what would probably be a good idea is having another look at this question tomorrow or something, just to give your, time, your brain time to like, let it sink in, 
forget it a little bit, and then see if you can do it on your own. But the key with questions like this is to make sure that you've really ordered your work so that you're not leaving something out. You can keep track of what you're doing. So like I had the three columns for this, so I could keep track of the different numbers. Then that's really the only way that you can do it. If you try and do this in your head, I wish you the best of luck, but I think you're a little bit mad. All right. Well done for making it through another Manchester Grammar Arithmetic paper, especially that last question. Don't forget, if you found this video helpful, then like us below. You can visit kinlearning.com for more 11 plus information and advice, and subscribe to our channel so you're the first to know when new videos are uploaded to this channel. Bye.